Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Thank you for joining us today for Jesus the Healer. We are so glad you're here. And you know what? We're believing God for answers for you. So we invite you, bring your faith, release your faith, get hold of the word and follow along with us and get something to take notes on because you're going to receive help today. Amen. Why? Because the word always helps us. And the better students we are, the more help we receive. Amen. Uh, we've been talking about something about how to always receive from God. You know, God never intends that we live by a hit and miss system. Right. Sometimes it works. Sometimes we don't receive. Some, maybe sometimes we do. Well, the, the percentage is increasing. No, always receiving is what God intends for us. Yes. But to receive what God has for us, he has to get our cooperation. Right. Amen. And so if God's not okay with us not always receiving, we shouldn't be okay That's with right. not yes. always yes. receiving. Right. So we've been talking about two things that have to be in place if we're to always receive what we need from God. And number one is we have to know God's will about our need. Yes. Yes. What does the Word of God have to say about our situation and what we're facing? Number two, knowing His will is not enough to arrive. We have to know how, what is our part, what do we have to do to cooperate with the ways of God? God has a will, but God has a ways of how that will is fulfilled. Exactly. So we have to know his will, but we also have to know his ways. Something doesn't just happen because we know mm -hmm. God has that for us. Right. It doesn't just happen because we know, well, that's the will of God for me. No, we also have to know and learn his ways. Yeah. Uh -huh. How are we going to learn them? It's in the book. It's in the book. It's in the book. Amen. Amen. Faith is not just knowing the will of God. It's discovering the ways of God and going those ways. Mm -hmm. You see, taking those ways, making those ways our ways. Yes. Amen. Um, we've, we invite you, if you have not watched the previous episodes, my goodness, you have yes. to go back and watch them because we can't take the time to restate it, but we want you to be able to hear what was said. So go back and read, and read that if you would, watch that rather. And I want you to open your Bible and read with us in Psalm chapter 95. We've been looking at this uh, one passage, but we want to look at it again. Psalm 95, and I'm going to read out the Amplified Classic Translation, starting with verse 10. It reads, 40 years ago, or 40 years long, rather, now, wait a minute, this is God saying. This is what he's talking about, about the Hebrews that he delivered out of Egypt. How many of you know that he delivered them out of the wrong place to bring them into the right place, yes. right? Right. Um, 40 years long was I grieved and disgusted with that generation. And I said, it is a people that do err in their hearts and they do not approve, acknowledge or regard my ways. We could say this, they didn't have honor for his ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, I swore in my wrath that they would not enter my rest, the land of promise. Mm -hmm. Now, notice this, they we're not interested mm -hmm. in what God said was his ways. Mm -hmm. They wanted God to adapt to them. Yeah. They would not adapt themselves to God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Learning his ways calls for us to adapt ourselves sure to yes. him. Yes. Mm -hmm. so and he is just and he is righteous by prescribing ways mm -hmm. because then 
It's the fair way to show us how to always arrive at success. Yeah. If we take those ways, we always arrive. Yes. Amen. If we're going to ignore those ways, dismiss those ways, then if we don't arrive, it's not his fault. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now notice, as a result of not knowing his ways, he was displeased with them. Yes. He was displeased. Yes. So it's not pleasing to him if we're ignorant right. about the ways of God. Yeah. It's, it's not pleasing to him if we're ignorant about his will because we can't have faith for it. If we don't know his ways, we can't receive. Our faith won't work as it ought. And so uh, as a result of not knowing his ways, he was displeased with them, meaning it gives us the realization of what a privilege it is to learn his ways. Amen. Meaning this, we'll seek it out, we'll ask, we'll knock right. yes, until right. we, get a, we gain a skillful working knowledge of the ways of God. Yes. Thank God for pastors, but we don't leave all the knowing for our lives to the pastor. Yes, right. <laughs> we got to know something. Yes. Amen. Um, I want us to see something that God said when Dad Hagen was on his deathbed as a young man. The Spirit of God revealed to him, you can be healed. You don't have to die at this young age. And Brother Hagen on that deathbed asked this question, how can I be healed? And the Spirit of God said to him, it's all in the book. Yeah. How we treat the book determines how sweet our life is. Amen. That's good. That's good. If we treat the, the Bible as a common book, we're going to rob something of God's best mm -hmm. from our life. Yes. Amen. It's Amen. all in the book. How hungry are we to know God's will and God's ways? It's in the book. Yes. Amen. It can be frustrating as a believer to know, that, to know God's will, but not knowing his ways. And you say, what do you mean it can be frustrating? It can be frustrating to know that healing belongs to us and not know how to cooperate with healing yeah. power. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It can be frustrating to know I should be prospering. Yeah. Prosperity right. belongs to me, but I don't know how to receive prosperity. Yeah. You see? So it can be frustrating to know something is yours and not know how to cooperate That's with right. it. Yes. It's like a hungry man who walks by the bakery window and he sees all these items in the window that would satisfy his hunger, but he can't reach them. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the money to buy them. Yeah. See, that's what it is. It's not enough to know God's will. We'll still be hungry if we don't learn his ways. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Amen. Amen. As we study, um, as we study the word, note of the word, what is God's will? And then what is God's way of fulfilling yes. that will? Yes. Amen. Amen. How many of you know you become more hungry? When, when, a, when a man is hungry for food, the more he sees food, the hungrier he gets. <laughs> yeah. 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 The more we feed on the word, the more hungry we, we come to know the will and the ways Amen. of God. Yes. Now, to receive a miracle, you have to have miracle faith. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to have faith for a miracle. Mm -hmm. You can't just have saving faith in the sense of just believing for your own salvation. And what I mean salvation is the born again experience because yeah. I know the word salvation implies more than being born again. But you have to, to receive healing, you have to have faith for healing. Yeah. To receive miracle, you have to have faith for a miracle. To receive prosperity, you have to have faith for prosperity. Faith works the same in every arena, but you have to develop that faith in every arena. Yes. Yes. Amen. So I want you to see something when I say the will of God and the ways of God. Let's just talk about real briefly this thing of this, this wonderful life of salvation, just being born again. Yes, the will of God tells us it's the will of God that none should perish, but all should right. come under yeah. repentance, right? Yeah. So God is saying it's his will that every man be born again. Yes. But that verse is not telling you how to be born again. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just showing his will. Yeah. But you can go over to Acts 2, 21, and it says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, that's a way to arrive at his will. Yes. You see that? Yes. So, um, and then it says this, It is the will of God that none should perish, but that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. So it's the will of God that we come to the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. It's the will of God that we have knowledge of his word, how he works. Well, that's his will. But how are we going to gain knowledge of his word? Well, Jesus said that 
those sheep that were sick and fainting and scattered, the problem was they didn't have a pastor. Yeah. God will give us a pastor sure to help will. us yes. come into the knowledge of his word. Yes. As we feed on the word of God for ourselves, we come to the knowledge yes. of the word. Yes. Amen. Amen. So um, look at Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. That verse is telling us the ways of faith, yes. the ways of God. And that is talk to what you don't want in your life. Yeah. Talk to things, they will obey you. Yes. That verse is the ways of God. How to arrive at receiving help. How to arrive at getting rid of things that are in your way. Don't climb the mountain. Don't value the mountain. Don't talk about the mountain. Talk to it. Yes. Amen. 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 So how do we get rid of things? It's the will of God that they not be there and it's the ways of God that we talk to them. Yes. Now, verse 24, Mark eleven twenty-four. 24, the very next verse says, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Mm-hmm. What is that verse? It's the ways of getting your desires met. Mm-hmm. 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 Verse 23 is telling you things will obey you talk to them. Mm-hmm. This is how to remove things from your path. Verse 24 is telling you how to get your desires met. Yes, what yes. things ever you desire when you pray. So what do we see? Verse, 11, verse 23 is the way of God. Yes. Verse 24, another way of God. Yes. We can't get our desires met unless we go that way. Yes. That's right. We can't, these mountains won't be removed unless we go the way of verse 11, of verse yes. 11 23. Yes. Right. Right. Won't go. We can try to pray it away. No, you got to talk it away. Yeah. You got to tell that mountain to go. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And people will pray and pray and pray and pray that God will do something about the mountain. But the ways of God is you talk to the mountain yes. Yes. and it will move at your saying. Yes. You see, you can't decide this is the way I prescribe to take. I'm going to pray and pray and pray for God to do something about that mountain. You won't receive. Yes. Why? Because the way prescribed is that you talk to the mountain. Yes. You see what I'm talking about? It's the will of God the mountain be removed, but it's the way of God that you tell it to go. It's the will of God in verse 24 that your desires be met, but the way of that being met is you're going to have to pr- you're going to have to desire it. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to release your faith and believe you receive it. Now, if you're not going to do that, you can't get your desires met, and it won't be God's fault. So that's what I'm talking about when I say go through the Bible and note scriptures that reveal the will of God, but also note scriptures that reveal the way of God. Because until we come into his ways, we won't experience his will. Till we know the ways of healing, we won't experience his will of healing. Till we know the ways of prosperity, we won't experience the will of prosperity. Now, uh, as I said, if we are to... Re- now, let, let, me, let me make this qualifying statement because this is a big one. The will of God is only arrived at by the ways of God, right? Yes. Faith is always the way of God. Always. We cannot conduct business with God to experience His will without faith. Mm-hmm. Faith is always the way. Yes. Worry is not the way. You can't worry and arrive at God's will. You can't get into strife and arrive at the will of God because strife is not a way of God. Unforgiveness, not a way of God. Fear, not a way of God. So people try to use the wrong ways to arrive at where they want to be. Can't be there. You won't arrive at the will of God going the wrong way. Have you ever... um, have you ever gotten in a car and thought you knew the way <laughs> of how to get to a certain location? Why did, in this studio audience, why did one man just tap his wife's leg? <laughs> Maybe I misread that, but. <laughs> if you're at home and you want to get to church, you got to know the way to get there. That's right. 
just because a church building is there does not mean you're going to arrive yeah, that's right. That's right. unless you take the prescribed ways. There may be more than one way to get there, one road to get there, but until you learn those ways, you won't arrive. The church didn't move. The church didn't leave. The church didn't change. Your way, the way of getting there was not known if somebody doesn't arrive, right? Then somebody can be delayed in arriving. I've preached in 25 years of pastoring. I've preached and watched people walk into the service the last 10 minutes yeah. of the service. <laughs> Why? They got lost. <laughs> they, came, they were driving in from another city and they got lost. Well, it's not too hard to get lost in Southern California sometime. A lot of streets going on. Yeah. But uh, not only do we want to arrive at the will of God, we want to arrive there on time. Yes. And yes. if things are late, it's not because God was late. Yes. It's yes. because we didn't know the way. Yes. And we didn't arrive with our faith yeah. on time. Yeah. That's right. uh, yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> we got to learn this. Yeah. I said we have to learn this because people blame God when it's they're not knowing the ways of God right. that right. robs from them. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they know healing belongs to them, if, even if they know prosperity, peace, joy belongs to them, if you don't know how to draw mm -hmm. on those things, yeah. receive of those things, mm -hmm. it's not God withholding them. It's us not knowing our part. That's right. Now, what about this prosperity? Uh, God has made known to us. What about, what about uh, Psalm 23, verse 1? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be in need, right? I shall not suffer want. I'll not do without. Why? As long as I follow the shepherd. Yes, that's right. Now, the Lord is my shepherd is the way. I have to follow him. I shall not want is his will. Yes. Right. 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 That I not want. Yeah. How do I not want? I have to follow him. If I follow me, if I follow my mind, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to arrive at want. Uh, that's good. Amen. You get that? Yeah. So learn that, learn to recognize when God is showing you his will, none of my people will suffer want. Because there are people who say, well, I know of Christians and their, their life is full of want. Not in following the shepherd. Yeah. If they hadn't, if they had followed the shepherd, you can't arrive at want. Yeah. That's right. Right. Uh, right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, what about true. this? Uh, my God shall supply yeah. all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. yes. That is written to a giver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the previous portions of that letter in the, in the book of Philippians that Paul wrote. He was thanking them for their giving. Yes. Yes. So it's the will of God that all of our needs are met, but we have to be givers. Yes. Yes. The way of arriving at our needs met is we have to be generous. Yes. We can't be a withholder. Right. God, when God says, bring all in Malachi, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Where's the storehouse? It's the place where your life is fed. Yes. Yes. Bring all the tithe, all the tithe, not just a little bit of it. Not just sometimes, bring it all the time. All the, see, these are the ways of God right. to, yes. to experience the prosperity of God unhindered. Yes. Uh, to receive, these passages let us know, to receive, you have to sow a seed. Yes. If you don't sow a seed, uh, uh, sowing a seed is a way of God yes. Yes. to arrive at the prosperity of His will. His will is we prosper. Right. It, prosperity belongs to us. Right. But for us to be in position to receive what belongs to us, we have to obey His ways. Right. And he, we can't be a withholder and, th and, and then blame God for not having our needs met. Right. Yeah. A farmer has ways of getting a harvest. Yeah. That's right. yeah. He has to take care of his ground. What's the ground? The soil of your heart. Sure the soil of your heart. Yeah. And so we have to, as a farmer sows seed into the ground to get a harvest, we have to sow the word into our hearts to get a harvest. But financially, we also have to sow a seed financially to reap a financial seed, yes. Yes. a financial right. harvest rather. Yeah. That's the way. Yeah. Uh, the way of the farmer is after you sow the seed, you water that seed. That's right. The way of God is that when you sow, you water. That's right. You can't neglect the word. We right. can't neglect um, sowing the seed, but we can't of the word in our heart. But we can't neglect watering that 
with the word. And then what about this? A, a farmer, to, to receive the highest harvest, he's got to keep the weeds out. Yeah. How do you keep the weeds out of your heart? Let, don't let offense in. Get rid of them. Right. Get rid of the weeds of unforgiveness. Get rid of the weeds of bitterness. Get rid of the weeds of strife. It will choke out. It will rob from the, it will rob from the seed you planted. Right. You know, I, my dad was a farmer. We would be sent out into the field to chop cotton. What was chopping cotton? We weren't chopping the cotton plant. We were chopping the weeds out from between the, the, the cotton plants. So why did we have to get rid of the weed? Because the weeds draw all the water out uh, away from the plant. The weeds drew all the nutrients out of the soil so that the, the cotton did not get proper nu nutrients to it. It also, the weeds would grow so fast that they would grow higher than the cotton and then the cotton didn't get the proper sunlight. It would put the cotton in the dark and the weed would take all the light. Yeah. So you see, you can't, these are ways. Yes. These are natural ways, but they're also parallel to spiritual ways yeah. that if we're going to prosper, we have to sow financially a seed. Not only that, we have to water that seed with right saying, right words of faith. Mm -hmm. Then we also have to keep the weeds out of our heart. Yes. Amen. 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 Then you have to, to receive a harvest. You got to go harvest it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, my dad, when he would sow a seed, the harvest didn't just automatically appear in his barn. That's right, that's right. He had to sow the seed. He had to water the seed. He had to protect the seed. But then he had to harvest the seed. These are the ways. Amen. Um, for how, is a, how do we harvest on a seed we've sown financially? Well, you have to speak right words. You sow, you sow with money, but you also have to say something yeah. when you give that money. You have to release your faith. Yes. This is where some people get disillusioned is they say, I give, to my, I give to my church or I give to ministry and I can't tell the difference. Well, you have to sow your faith at the time you give your money. Right. It's not just the money that does something. It's the faith joined with that. Yeah. If you don't expect something, you don't receive something. Amen. So you sow with words of faith when you give your money, but you also harvest with words of faith. Amen. So you have to learn to follow the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will tell you, do this, start this business, do that, give here. And when you follow the Holy Ghost, he'll help you harvest. Yes. Amen. Amen. But you have to do your part in that. Yes. Now it's the will of God that we receive the power of God, isn't it? Yes. Amen. Uh, Peter talks about that we are kept by the power of God through faith. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, that's the will of God, that the power of God keep us. Well, how, and then Paul, uh, Peter shows a bit of the ways of God with that through faith. We have to add our faith to that power. Amen. Amen. You have to know that, that, that the power of God belongs to you. You have to know that it's present. Amen. Amen. Uh, then you have to speak words that give that power permission to work. Yes. Amen. What about the woman with the issue of blood? She believed in the power of God, yes. didn't she? Yes. Uh, she went and found Jesus. She was dying of an issue of blood. For 12 years she had suffered with this. But she didn't just say, well, if it's the will of God to heal me, he'll heal me. Well, it was the will. That's why she got out and sought Jesus. She recognized yes. it was the will of God to heal her. But the way of God, the way of receiving healing was not just staying home and say, well, if he wants me healed, he'll heal me. That's not the way. What did she do? She had to go out and she had to, if I could say this, bring her faith to the scene. She had to join her faith to, the, to that living word. Jesus was out among the people. She had to have faith enough to get up get out of her house, get dressed, go find where he's, at, where he's at. And then when she got there, he's surrounded by a multitude. Well, what she got to do, she can't say, well, if, 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 he wants, if God wants me healed, he'll tell Jesus I'm here. No, that's not the way. She got on her hands and knees and she crawled through that crowd. She said, if I may but touch his garment. She knew this, the way of God, I got to touch him. My faith, my action of faith has to touch him. Amen. Amen. So she realized that she had a part to play. Yeah. She took the ways of God and received the will of God. Amen. 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 Well, we've got to learn these things. Yes. I said we've got to learn these things because people will blame God when they don't receive something. They'll accuse God. 
of not caring. They'll have all kinds of mental ways of reasoning to, if I could say this, satisfy themselves mm -hmm. as to why they didn't receive. If we don't receive, it's not on God's side. Right. Right. It's right. always on our side. You know, my husband, um, when he was in his late 50s, now he went home to be with the Lord when he was 72. But when he was in his late 50s, he was diagnosed with cancer. And um, when we left the doctor's office that day after he had received the report, I got in my car and he got in his car. We hadn't driven there together because we'd come from two different locations. And so we were both driving back home. He reached home before I did, maybe about 10 minutes or so before I got home. And when I walked into the house, he said to me, he says, I've already had a talk with God and I found out the cause. And I said, well, what happened? He said, I came in and I said, God, you don't miss it. I, I've missed it somewhere. Where have I missed it? And God said to him, he said, number one, I've told you to rest for years and you wouldn't do it. He said, you'd do it for a while, then you'd go back to your bad habit. Number two, he said, you haven't obeyed me in the prophet's office. I'd tell you to say something, you wouldn't say it. So Ed said, okay, God, I repent. And when he, he repented to God, God said, okay, within 30 days, it'll all be gone. Ed went back to the doctor on day 28. The doctor said, somebody up there likes you because it's all gone. <laughs> now see, that didn't happen because God loved him. He had to learn the ways. What was the way? he had realized he had missed God. Yeah. He found out from God personally, where did I miss it? Mm -hmm. He made corrections. Yes. When we correct things that are not in line with his word, his will, and his ways, mm -hmm. then we're back on receiving territory. Yes. And then he could receive his help, oh. you see. Ed didn't just say, well, if God loves me, he'll heal me. No, right. he took steps. Yes to cooperate with the ways of God. What was the way of God? Repentance is a way of God. Correction is a way of God. Well, there's more to learn and we're going to learn it. So you don't want to miss next time. Amen. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, The Healer Divine, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. On this CD, Confessions of Healing, Nancy Dufresne begins to lead in confessions for healing from the scriptures, allowing time for the listener to repeat them after her. If you or someone you know is in need of healing, this CD will be a blessing to you. Order today at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual camp meeting here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, June 12th through the 16th. Speakers include Nancy Dufresne, Jesse Duplantis, Jerry Savelle, and Bill Winston. For more information, please visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.